Hi everybody, this is Flo from KMS Reviews. And today I'm joined by Berlin-based visual artist and singer-songwriter John Campbell. John, hi there. Thanks for being on the show tonight. Hi Flo, thanks for having me. So tell us a bit about yourself. Who is John Campbell? Um, I'm an artist from uh, originally from upstate New York, from a small town called Saugerties, um, about two hours north of New York City. And I've spent the past 14 years living in Berlin, Germany. Okay. What made you change your location? Um, basically, I finished uh, art school in 2006. Um, and um, some friends of mine had recommended Berlin to me. Uh, in the, I'd, I'd also lived in Germany for four years as a child. And um, in that time, I'd never visited Berlin, but some friends who had been here had recommended it to me. And, I didn't really have a plan coming out of art school and um, had always kind of had it in the back of my mind to return to Europe anyway. So, um, so yeah, it seems like a good place to, uh, to land after, after art school. Why Berlin? Why not anywhere else in the world? Uh, well, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, well, like I said, they had recommended it as a city that's just, uh, it had a great, you know, reputation as a city for, and still has a great reputation for as a city for, for artists. Um, it's a, quite a creative hub um, and still quite inexpensive. I mean, at the time when I moved here in 2007, it was, it was very inexpensive and it still remains fairly inexpensive. So, and also quite queer, and it's a, it's a very queer friendly city. Um, so, yeah, so, um, and I mean, I, I didn't really intend on living here. Uh, I mean, I didn't really have a plan. I just sort of showed up with a backpack, uh, a guitar, a backpack, and like literally some, some clothes and some paints. <laughs> and like, I thought maybe I'll be here, I don't know, a summer or a year or whatever. And it's 14 years later, <laughs> here we are. So, so it does feel like home, I guess. Oh yeah, for sure. Do you plan sure. on moving I, anywhere soon? No, um, I've actually, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to, uh, to hear if um, my citizenship uh, application goes through. I applied for citizenship uh, last year. Um, so I should find out, I should know by August, I think at the latest, August or September. So uh, yeah, crossing my fingers. <laughs> So you just told me that uh, you finished art school. So the creative um, aspect has always been a big one in your life. So For sure. when did you realize that you are not only a visual artist, but also a musician? Um, I guess I've always known I was, well, I mean, uh, you know, I guess, I mean, it's, it's uh, I guess in terms of like, I, I mean, I started playing guitar when I was 13 or 14. Um, uh, so, and I started writing my, f my first songs with, I guess, 16. Yeah, so 16 years old and I consistently write songs. Um, but there was never a point where I thought of it as like, oh, I'm like, like would define myself as like, oh, I'm, I'm a musician now. I, I think because I'd always, I started with, with uh, visual art, like drawing and painting. So, and I mean that from as long as I can remember, um, really like as soon as I could hold like a crayon, I suppose, like two, two years old, I'm mean, really, you know, whatever, very young. My mother's a painter and um, I would spend time watching her paint a lot. And so it was kind of became second nature for me. Um, and so it was just something I always did. And then I think because I was always doing that in school and stuff like, you know, um, you know, I was kind of, I was that kid, like, you know, I feel like every, every class has like that kid that's always drawing and, and people are, you know, like, like, you know, the like, silent ones. <laughs> yeah, I was like, like the quiet kid, but like, you know, that's how like, uh, you know, like friends would ask me like, hey, draw me, you know, Bart Simpson or like, <laughs> or the Ninja Turtles or whatever the thing was. And then, you know, um, or their icons. Like I remember in high school, people were asking me to, to make drawings of like Jay-Z or, or like their favorite like sports stars and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so, 
so yeah and i think because like that particularly that when that's encouraged so much uh as a kid like then you start to kind of develop an identity around that and say oh i'm a you know i'm a i'm an artist um and obviously art teachers also encourage that a lot which was which was obviously very good um and also i mean music teachers had also encouraged me uh from a young age too, from I think like third grade on, there, like, there was music teachers saying like, you know, um, that there was like, a, you know, I was a promising music student or whatever, but somehow music, I, in my mind, I always sort of thought of it more as a hobby or something, I guess, like, or it seemed kind of like a side side gig and it, it, it kind of was a side gig, um, even though I was writing songs consistently for, for many years, like from 16 to, well, I mean, yeah, 16 to, yeah, I mean, from 16 on, I was writing songs consistently and, um, but always keeping it quite private. Um, I think mostly because of like stage fright. So that, I think probably the stage fright is what kept me from taking it seriously in terms of like professionally, because I was like, well, I can't, I did, I tried it a few times. I got on stages when I was 18, 19. Um, and it freaked me the fuck out. And I'm like, no, I can't, <laughs> like, this isn't for me, you know, whatever. So it became, it was just a very private thing. I would just kind of do for friends and, and, uh, and write songs uh, specifically for guys that I was in love with. And I just kind of like make songs and, and produce songs just to play <laughs> to the guys, like as like a, a, a letter, a, a message or whatever. So, um, so yeah, but then in uh, 2016, uh, not 2016, 2015, um, that changed and I started, uh, that's when I started taking it more like professionally. And so I guess I would consider myself like, you know, like that's when I started considering myself just as much uh, a musician as a visual artist, I suppose. So it's 50-50 then, or do you prefer doing something over the other? Um. It's, it's not like, it's not so regimented in terms of, it's, to me, it's all kind of like one, one world and it's just different expressions of the same thing. So um, that's why I particularly like the sort of like animating music videos and stuff. Cause to me, that's like the perfect like uh, blend of like, of these two worlds. It's a, it's, it's a great opportunity. I mean, I mean, I like working with cameras too. I mean, um, you know, with, with film or whatever, video. Um, but particularly with, an, I mean, um, I haven't done a whole lot of it, but with, with animating, it's like, you can do, it's such a, you can express so many like kind of nuances of emotions and stuff that you can't necessarily do with, you know, with an actor or, or, uh, or with myself um, in front of the camera or something. So that's just an expression of like how those two worlds are essentially, you know, one thing, you know, it's like, um, different expressions of the same, the same uh, source, so to speak. Yeah, I understand. So this might be a tricky question because what are your intentions when creating something? Is it that you want to expose something private to, to the outside world or what kind of intention do you have when creating, for example, a new uh, picture or a, a new track? Um, I mean, sometimes there's an intention, but, um, not so much. It's usually like, I mean, it's, I, I, my songs are, are very personal. And so usually it's kind of a matter of working through something, you know, I feel like, um, I mean, most of the source is, is generally been about, uh, love and about, about, uh, like you know love songs for 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 guys and um and and sort of investigations of that and and um and sexuality very much um but it's kind of like yeah it's the process of working through territory that's not so sort of easy to define in other ways like i feel like music has a particular a particular way of like defining things that um writing can't necessarily do or, or just language itself i mean because because obviously uh, the, the language is just one aspect of a much broader uh um art form with music so there's so much nuance involved in terms of you know there's just yeah i mean uh 
melody, music, um, just the emotional um, textures of things can describe so much more than just the thing, just the just the the, the narrative of the lyric or whatever. So. I think it's part of that too. Like, I mean, there's an aspect of painting sometimes where sometimes that feels just right for whatever particular thing I'm working through um, in terms of, you know, I guess, I guess it's always a choice of like whatever medium you choose to best to describe or best, yeah, best describe what you want to work through. And, and um, you know, maybe a poem is the best way. Maybe that's all you need is the poem. It doesn't need music behind it. It doesn't need visuals behind it to describe whatever particular emotional situation it is. Um, and some things lend themselves to paintings, like, oh, that's, you know, that's supposed to be a painting. It's, that's exactly, doesn't need to be more than that. And then sometimes, sometimes it needs to be a song or, you know, or a, a combination of all of those things, so. Choosing the art form to express something coincidental or do you have some, some gut feel what to choose at the time? No, I think, I think it, um, I think it starts, it starts with an inspiration um, and then working through it come, comes through that. I mean, it tends to be, uh, I mean, well, you know, visually, obviously the visual, visual cues in the world will, will um, obviously tend to inspire uh, paintings more often. I mean, but it can also happen that visual cues can inspire a writing and it can inspire a song. Um, it's usually emotional situations or, or situations that deal with love and, and uh, or unrequited love or, or longing and stuff that tend to, uh, yeah, tend to go the, the, the direction of music more often. Um, sort of emotional situations that can't seem to be, you know, that I can't really work out in, in therapy <laughs> or whatever. It's like nothing, nothing else works. So you have to write a song and that's, that's the situation I find myself in often, um, you know, that you want to work something out with, with, a, with a guy or with, you know, or, or yeah, with, with the feeling of, yeah, being in love with somebody or, or any, any difficult emotions that, um, you know, that it seems like a song is the only way that you're going to work through that, so. Do you have, if, if you created something, is there always, a, let's call it, target audience is there a recipient and on the other end or is it just is it, is it not always um, like uh, targeted messages message um that's a good question um i mean that's a that's a really good question i have to kind of think about it i mean it, some it, it in some songs for sure because like some songs are really like love letters to like very specific guys um, so in that case, for sure, I'm, I'm, I'm really like when I'm singing it, I'm really addressing that person. Um, and I mean, like my music is definitely sort of, you know, as, I mean, I'm a queer artist. So a lot of the like queerness comes through inevitably in a lot of the work. But then there's some songs that are sort of more um, like my recent single Faggot is definitely like sort of for queer people. Like it's I mean, it. it it's not, but I mean, that's at the same time, it's like not only for, you know, it's not exclusive to anybody. It's for the, it's music is music, it's for the world, right? But, and it's, and I'm sure other, you know, and other people might relate to it in other ways, you know, like, um, and that's, that's fine too, you know, it should all be open for, uh, for different interpretation and stuff. But for myself, it's like, it's like investigating my own homophobia and internalized homophobia and, and homophobia in the world. And like, that's sort of working through that. That's what came out of it. It was a very like, you know, cathartic healing, um, healing experience. And so, I mean, really I'm working through that for myself, but um, obviously I know, you know, with the knowledge that I'm putting it out there in the world, hoping that, you know, that it can do the same for other people, that it can be cathartic for other people or that um, it can, you know, be at all in any way kind of uh, healing for other people too. So, so I suppose like the audience, different audiences or different people I'm addressing are certainly, yeah, there's certainly, it depends on the song, it depends on the circumstance, but they're, um, I have them in mind for sure. I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't happen in a vacuum. So, yeah. Um, maybe it's just me, but I felt that the messages of your project have become more and more intense over the last year or year and a half. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sure. In both paintings and music. So, the question here would be, is there tension and intensity building or is it just a few 
feeling from my side. No, it's, it's definitely, for sure, definitely more intense. Um, Why is that? Well, it's been an intense, <laughs> it's been an intense year. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, I mean, especially like the whole album really is like, uh, it, it's, you know, it feels quite intense. Um, it, it is quite intense that, you know, the cover, the cover art reflects that obviously. Um, you know, I f like, it's like, I feel like artists are sort of, um, you know, I feel, I, I've, I've written in the past about artists, like in terms of instruments, like membranes, you know, and like situations happen and they kind of reverberate off of us. And uh, I'm, I'm a, a very, you know, quite a sensitive person. And, you know, I don't know, situations just kind of like the, you know, life happens and things happen and whether it's falling in love or, or having your heart broken or, you know, pandemic and the <laughs> world, yeah. world kind of crumbling and stuff and these things happen. And, those situations kind of rattle off of us, you know, uh, sensitive people and artists or creative people, and they rattle off of everybody, right? And d different people react to things in different ways. And that's just the way that I process um, the things that are happening in my life. They kind of, uh, you know, rattle off me like a membrane and that's what, you know, and so that's just, I'm sort of just reflecting back like what, what's kind of going into me, um, you know, cause it, it basically seems like, I mean, it's not like I, I set out to, you know, I, I didn't set out to make like a, you know, dark, <laughs> like intense album. Like, oh, I'm gonna like, you know, at the end of my last album, my last album was pretty dark too. Um, it was dealing with a lot of like heartbreak and stuff. And but it was also kind of like a, a personal. It was the first time I heard one of your songs and it was mm -hmm. a very sensitive, slow ballad kind of thing. And mm -hmm. you don't tend to make intense songs in forms of, uh, energy or drive or something like right. that, but but the message or the the the, the emotion that is fed to the listener uh, while you're listening to the song is kind of yeah it, it struck me a bit because uh, it, it builds the tension and you know something is different than mm. a year ago. So yeah, uh, yeah. speaking of that, are you? When finishing a song, uh, are you um, I'm searching for the right words here? Uh, are you satisfied once the track is out, or is this is this just a reflection of your state of mind? And you say, okay, it's out. Next one. Uh, do you do you um, analyze the product once it's finished, so to speak? Um, I, I honestly, I try not to. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I, of course, I do. Like you know, somewhat. Um, and it depends on the songs. I mean, uh, there's some of my songs I'll, I'll listen to, um, but like like many artists and producers, I'm a perfectionist and uh, and usually I can't listen to it. And a lot of my stuff I won't listen to because I only hear the mistakes, you know? <laughs> and, like, and of course, like there's always stuff you would want to change. Like it doesn't matter, you know? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm obviously like, extremely indie um in terms of i mean i don't i don't do the mixing um i don't do the mastering um but everything else pretty much i do um and i mean i don't play every instrument but you know um i write all the scores and stuff so it's it's uh it's all very you know i have my hands in every single aspect of it and um so um so yeah i i um tend to get quite obsessive about stuff and then and you know um and i'll listen to it just like relentlessly throughout the process of production um to, to the point of like the brink of insanity and then but once it's out usually usually i don't really i don't listen to it um i put it out there and just kind of move on to the next thing um and uh be, like i said i can I usually only hear the, uh, the or at least not only hear the mistakes but the mistakes will jump out a lot and it doesn't matter if you're if you're an indie producer like me. I mean, my music is is fairly lo-fi. Um, I'm you know even the most high the hi-fi pro, uh, producers with huge budgets uh, have the same the same thing. I'm sure you know. I'm sure that like whatever Beyonce listens to stuff and she's like, oh, why did I you know do this thing or whatever it is. I guess you know, so. without a deadline that uh, you would listen to the same song a thousand times and still find exactly. something. Exactly. Of course, yeah, yeah. But I'm never going to tell what those things are. <laughs> <laughs> no, you shouldn't. So, so just me. Yeah. 
let's talk about the main project for 2021. Uh, that would be the album Wolfen. You, you mm -hmm. uh, started to uh, release single tracks out of the album and you continue to do so until the album is complete in June, I guess, or something like no, that? No, no, uh, just in two weeks from now, uh, April, April 9th, it comes out. Okay. So can you yeah. give us a quick overview of the Wolfen project from from the initial idea to a finished album? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, uh, the, the I guess the the conception of it really was in uh, December of 2019. Um, I just I just finished uh, my album Sirens and. Um, had at the, right at the end of Sirens also had a, a, a rough breakup and had kind of like basically wanted to, I was asking myself like why you know uh, why did this relationship fail and and what's my part in that and and um, you know just kind of like uh, and it was right around the time of my birthday uh, my 37th birthday and I think I think yeah I think my mother had sent me um, or had reminded me that um, that they had given me this nickname Wolfen when I was born. I, I, and I saw that also that I remember the first time I'd read that it was in like a, a sort of like baby journal. I don't know if like if that's like something that is also common in Germany that you have like a yeah like a baby journal or whatever mm -hmm. or like notes you know your parents write notes about your whatever first first words and stuff like that. And that's the first time I had actually seen that was in my uh, baby journal that, that they had given me this nickname. Not it wasn't like a, a you know it's not like they were calling me Wolfen for like for, for years. I think that it was literally just like a couple of days. <clears throat> and so I kind of thought about that. Um, they, they obviously didn't mean it in that sense. Um, but I was thinking, I just thought it like, it was right at the same time as this breakup. And so the kind of, I kind of made the connection in my mind of like wolf, like lone wolf type of, uh, type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so that kind of right away I knew that I wanted to make this to make an album um, that kind of was like an investigation of that, like uh, and also something more uh, personal and because the thing is like Sirens was very much like dealing with like the other, like almost every pretty much I think pretty much every song. I mean, it, yeah, more or less. I think every song in Sirens is like dealing with the other, right? So it's always about like uh, a guy or a guy or <laughs> it's all about guys um and you know i mean it is very personal sirens is also a very personal album for sure but uh it's not it's not like really looking into myself so much and so it just seemed i guess it seemed natural and i felt i think artistically also i sort of felt like or in terms of music it's like a second album it, it felt like the right time to to make a very personal record anyway, especially because um, I was just kind of at like a dead end. It was like, Sirens has just been finished. And it was like, I had this idea to, to, you know, to go touring with it, to bring it to Amsterdam. And I wanted to bring it to Rome and New York and all this stuff. And, um, but at the same time, it was like, um, I felt like I wasn't really dealing with my, my, my stuff, you know, like my, my problems and, and, and yeah, I mean, I, I kind of had this feeling of like, what's the point of, what's the point of like touring this album and doing all this stuff if I'm like, um, you know, I can't even, I can't make a relationship work. Uh, so, cause you know, because of this breakup. So that's kind of what triggered it. Um, and so, yeah, so in December, it's like when I, 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 the title was the first thing I knew. I knew I was going to make an album that was like this sort of personal, like, you know, investigation. And, and I knew that it was called Wolf and that's all I knew. And I kind of naively thought, um, that I had like all of 2020 because I wanted to kind of slow down. I was really burnt out. I was kind of in a, a rough place uh, health wise. And so I thought I'm going to give myself the whole year 2020, like to just write, like that's the only thing I'm going to do is just write the album, like nothing else. Like um, I said, you know, the, the earliest I'd go into a studio would be like maybe the fall or, or winter 2020. But then, you know, things change really quickly and and just a little bit just you know a couple of things happened and uh yeah and I was you know the next thing I knew it was like it was basically yeah it was written by end of April or like mid-May it was it was it was all written 
and arranged. I mean, it was totally ready to go. So, <clears throat> so I started recording already in, in, in April. Um, and I finished my recordings in July, early July. And then, um, just one by one, like one uh, session musician after another, just like, you know, we had like a drums day, you know, bass. Um, I recorded my guitar and vocals here in my, my home studio and everything else. I did at the famous gold watch uh, in, in Weissensee. Mm -hmm. And um, I was on a budget, really tight budget. So I could only do like, you know, one, one month at a time, <laughs> like using my furloughed pay, like to uh, like, draining my resources to, <laughs> into the album which you know whatever it's maybe not you know the wisest thing but, but fuck it you know <laughs> so uh to do so. yeah I don't, exactly i don't really do. I, exactly i don't really have a choice so so yeah and then it was finished record we did the last recordings of the, the musicians um in september and that was it and yeah so yeah so and the release is basically yeah, I started uh, the first the first song in the end of February and just like one week at a time. Um, or yeah, no, sorry, two songs on February 25th and then one song a week until April uh, April 8th is uh, the last video to be released and then the album comes out April 9th. Isn't today a release day for one of those? It days? is, yeah, I, j I actually just released one. <laughs> like, I don't what know, the heck are you doing here? <laughs> It's gotten at this point, it's like so like it's so mechanical. I just, you know, like the process of releasing it just like post and and to be honest, like it makes me so anxious. Like releases make me so anxious. Um that I've just sort of stopped. Uh I don't know, it's probably maybe not the wisest thing to say. I just I basically stop looking. I mean, I'll, of course I'll check and see, you know, if if people are liking it and commenting or whatever, but I really it just it gives me too much anxiety. So like it's more important to me to just like Put the work out there and just and you know you get away already from that. put a lot of thought in the whole project project and uh, mm -hmm. you uh, took all those thoughts and wrote it down onto your home page so i yeah as i was reading through that that that's what was basically the point where i decided to uh, to contact you to do this interview because you cannot just grab a single track out of this album and say, here, that's a reflection of who he is. But yeah. the whole album seemed to me as a, I don't know if I can call it therapy kind of thing. Yeah, it's, yeah, it is very therapeutic, yeah. So, sure. uh, so this gives a um, more complete picture of who you are and what you want to achieve with this album. So, yeah, yeah, and that's actually why, <clears throat> I mean, I know it's, it's a very, um, it's very unusual format to release an album for sure, you know, it's, um, and it's a risk, you know, I mean, I knew it was a risk going into it. Uh, I'm putting myself way out there. Um, but I, I, you know, I spent a lot of time thinking about how to release it because it, it, it wasn't like, because, yeah, because like you said, therapy, I mean, the, making the thing is very therapeutic and from the onset, it, it felt like, I had to make it, I have to do this, you know, I gotta like uh, get to the source of, of, of this, these problems I'm running into over and over again. And, um, and, and music is the way that that's gonna, like, you know, like we were saying earlier, like you choose the medium, like music seemed, I mean, I suppose, well, that's, that's not true. It's not, you know, painting also does, uh, does that as well. But in terms of really like a, a cathartic sort of like record of it, I mean, like in literal sense, like a record of that catharsis. Um, it seemed obviously a record seemed like the best way to, to get that, to get that out there. And so I, it, yeah, like it, it wasn't like, you know, it certainly wasn't motivated by like, you know, I don't, you know, like a, a you know, a summer jam or something or like, or like <laughs> any, you know, or, or like whatever, like streaming numbers or something, you know, it wasn't like, an, you know, like pop music or something. Um, it's extremely personal and, um, you know, so, but it's like, you know, what are you gonna do with that, right? I mean, I made the, I made the work and did the thing and it's like, obviously I'm gonna release it. Um, you know, I'm not making work in a vacuum and I'm not just going to, to keep it private or something. And so I, I, I really spent a lot of time asking myself, like, how do I, 
you know, how do I release this in a way that's not, you know, it's like, I thought about just releasing the songs and not giving any kind of context at all because it felt like it's kind of, it felt very like either or like black or white in a way of like, either I'm going to be like brutally honest and very sincere um, about it, or I'm just not going to say anything at all and just put it out there. But it just, like, the latter just didn't feel like it would be doing the work any justice. And, um, and also I felt like it's important just to, because like in case anybody can relate to these things and um, you know, any number of, of different sort of emotional situations, it felt like, um, I felt, you know, I felt kind of a responsibility to, um, to do this because it's like, there's, there's a sort of, especially with like what's going on because like the album happened together also with the, with the crisis and stuff that we're going through. And like the biggest like conflict that I, uh, that like I'm experiencing, you know, that we're all, or I'm, you know, we're all experiencing, but like me personally, like in terms of like, as an artist or what I, what I find very difficult about art right now or, or creativity right now is that we're all like kind of living online and we're all, you know, on our phones and, and, and connecting to each other digitally. And, and that like the digital format is obviously great in so many ways, like, you know, like what we're doing right now. I mean, you know, um, but at the same time, it's, it's like compression is such a huge part of it. And like, whether it's an MP3 compression and like losing so much like, you know, like nuance and detail and, 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 and sound and EQ and stuff, or whether it's like the sort of spotification of music. Like if you take like a, if you consider like a vinyl record on like, you know, um, a great, uh, a vinyl record on a great system, you know, compared to like, you know, Spotify, uh, As, you know, on your, on your phone or something. It's a different flavor. It's then. a different, yeah, it's a whole different world. But like, there's a sort of <clears throat> like the, the digitalization of everything. And, and because we're all living in this, um, we're kind of all in this like this matrix thing now but that is in, it can be incredibly limiting of our experience so we're connecting to each other um to relate to one another to see you know to see how we're doing and like oh you know how are you dealing with this and how are you dealing with this and it works great in terms of like uh, like zoom is actually a really good format for that because it's like a very human uh, can, you know as, as human as i can as it can get in 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 this context um but in terms of music and art, it's like, like I had to ask myself, like, how, you know, uh, how do you, how can I use the, like the, the tools of social media, like Instagram as a tool to just like forget about what you're supposed to do with it. And like, you know, the sort of like the sort of, I don't know, um, what would you like the, 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 you know, the most common way that people use those, use social media, um, you know, and, and also, you know, it's sort of like influencer culture and stuff. And, um like how do you how do you like portray a sort of very broad experience and like a really uh, a, you know a very broad experience and a very with like tons like so much nuance and depth and of, of you know we're all going through like extremely complex emotions yeah, try to put very 15 seconds off uh, yeah and story, that yeah. and trying to compress this experience into into sort of like hashtags and and metadata and and i and the same thing with like identities too like the way that that's also sort of like the spotification of music and um that it's like identity is also becoming very compressed and in, into like sort of like like you know fitting sort of slots of like you know different kind of like pr stuff and it's like it's boiling things down into like very like too simplistic terms and it's kind of flattening out our, our identities and our world, I think too much. And, and I mean, it was happening before the crisis anyway, but it, it becomes, uh, it becomes extremely critical when we need to have that like really broad experience and that really nuanced experience and, and complex uh, understanding of, you know, of the, the weird contradictions of our emotions and our, our experiences and stuff. And, and um, you know, all the different, yeah, com uh, complexities of our, of our emotional experience, um, it becomes really critical when the only way we can do that, uh, uh, you know, communicate that is through these sort of very, yeah, very compressed, very uh, flattening um, 
and very limiting, uh, you, know, you know, social media, digital, digital uh, communication. And so it was kind of like, that, so for that reason, it felt like that's the only way for myself to convey as much of that complexity uh, as I could without getting to, you know, because it just, if anything else feels like just, you know, to if, like, it, like holding my cards close to my chest in any kind of way to be like, oh, you know, like just giving a little sort of nugget of like, oh, this song was about like trying to boil things down to some little tagline or something that's convenient for PR campaign or something, but like not convenient for a human experience, you know? So, um, so that's why I was trying to really, you know, I mean, it's, it's also, a, it's a lot and I'm, I wouldn't expect like, you know, I'm sure like, you know, I'm not expecting everybody to, to read through my entire, like, you know, novella or whatever, but, um, but I'm at least just, it's just out there and it's like, you know, uh, you know, and um, yeah, and just trying to convey the complexity of that through the tools that I have at hand, basically. So that, that was, uh, also is my final question for tonight. Um, as I was reading through what you described uh, as the Wolfen project, um, I was wondering what happened to the, the, sh the shy boy uh, as a ninth grader uh, who had stage fright to someone mm. who makes him, puts himself into a quite vulnerable position because you're giving away so much from you. You just yeah. give that to somebody you don't know ex exactly and you just put it there on the net and um, with everybody to read it. And I'm pretty sure that most of, not, not necessarily most of, of your songs, uh, but, but several of, of the songs won't be received the way you, you intended them to. So yeah. what makes you, what, what made you transform this shy boy to this expert? Um. I think just, I mean, I'm still, I'm still shy for <laughs> sure. Uh, but I mean, also, I, I guess, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I can't, maybe just like not really giving a fuck anymore. <laughs> uh, If that was a I don't good know, question, just, that was a good answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's like, that's the, uh, that's the compressed answer. <laughs> but uh, I mean, yeah, I guess the longer, the longer answer would be, um just i guess just feeling like just like i said before like you know feeling like there's there's things i really want to communicate to people um and especially dealing with like situations that are so you know and i, I you know i don't i i don't mean to sound at all like like i have anything figured out because i'm going through the same shit as everybody else with this with this pandemic and this crisis and stuff and you know finding it just as difficult as anybody but um having had a lot of um having navigated a lot of like sort of similar territory um to you know like in, in one of my posts i'd written something about like you know a, a lot of this time uh, in the past like 22 years or whatever felt to me sort of like an emotional lockdown um and so Uh, so taking what I've learned from that, like anything at all I've learned from that and, and sharing it just feels like, kind of feels like just like a responsibility as an artist. Um, so, I mean, I still, yeah, I mean, I'm basically, I'm just as shy as ever. Um, but, um, and, you know, and I mean, I'm not necessarily, I wouldn't really consider myself an extrovert per se. Uh, I mean, you know, I do, I, I love, I love performing my music. I love the feeling of being on stage. Um, but, um, but it's more of like a sense of just like, you know, I, it's, uh, I feel like, I just feel like a certain kind of responsibility, I guess, as an artist. And, and I feel like we can't look just to politicians to fix stuff right now. And we can't look to just scientists. I feel like artists have a duty to help us, you know, if like, if artists are sort of like the, you know, um, the world needs like assistance and, you know, a, a, a push and imagination, you know, we need to, we need to imagine, like, I feel like so much of our insecurity and fear about the future and stuff is like, we, we, 
I mean, what is insecurity? What is, you know, or, or what, what's the word um, the people, uh, uncertainty, you know, uncertainty is like, you don't know that that's like the, the feeling that we're all having about uncertainty is like, we don't know what the future is like, but that's the job of artists to, to help us envision what the future is like. That's the artists have always, have always done. And I mean, if you look through, throughout art history, it's been this, a similar thing, you know, um, like the art that came out of like the, the, the pre, like pre-World War I and the, the uncertainty of that time and uh, like the, the German artists of that time, Die Brücke and stuff, you know, and, and um, the, that's, I guess that's sort of what I was, what I was trying to get at before is like, is feeling like we can't just rely on politicians to do, to do the work, you know, we can't like waiting for them to, you know, to, to fix the situation. They're, they're just human beings, you know, and, and that know just as much as we do. I mean, we're just, we're all following the science as we should, but in terms of, of in terms of culture and our, in terms of our human experience, like artists are sort of like the, I feel like we're like, um, like the reporters on, on human experience, you know, like there's like news reporters and like there's the scientists and then there's like artists are like reporting on the human experience and the art should be reflecting that, but um, in an honest way for sure, you know, cause it, I, I feel like, I mean, it's good. Sure. If like, if it's like positive, like, you know, uh, um, like, you know, uplifting fun dance tracks, that's fine and good. Like, that's great. But um but there also needs to be for sure, like a, a, like a, a reporting on that human experience so that we can connect to that. And also so that we can, um, ha, you know, have share ideas about uh, envisioning new ideas for the, for moving forward that, that we can't, we're not going to necessarily expect from politicians because we don't, we don't necessarily elect politicians because they have, you know, uh, um, colorful imaginations we do it because you know for other reasons <laughs> so and so like yeah said, like you said uh, with the, the everyday radio pop song that won't be remembered because of the lack of honesty i at least that's my opinion uh, that i always write those things in my reviews as well if it's not honest the the people the listeners can sense it in a second and if they yeah, do exactly. so they, they can choose between two things one ignore it skip to the other one and two yeah just listen to it because mainstream says so or because you have feel the need to dance to it or something like this but it yeah. stick to your head and it for sure won't be remembered for anything yeah and yeah and once exactly. it's, and, and once it's done honest and it leaves a mark i would go so far to say that artists leave a mark that is um, known a couple of hundred years from now on but politicians mm. yeah not so much because they are as you said they they don't um, they are not uh, there because of their imagination or colorful illustration or visions yeah. uh, to, to how things should be like yeah. but, but they are just they're, an, they're the enacting time. yeah they're they're enacting you know i mean they're doing obviously extremely important work and enacting policies and and hopefully listening to their their citizenry you know in in, in functioning democracies we hope <laughs> but I mean, the people that are, it's like, you know, in the, it's a dark time, like in, and I feel like, like the first step, like James Baldwin says, right, like nothing can be changed until it is faced, right. And so the first step is facing that and, and, and not sort of like, you know, putting on like, you know, not that anyone's putting on rose colored glasses, but, but like, you know, being just being honest about the situation at hand and, and looking at it for what it is. And then uh, and not having illusions about it, but and you know, in a dark time, to like artists have to be the ones holding the the, the flashlights at the at the front. You know, it's like that's what the avant garde needs to be doing is is leading the way. And um, in terms of our culture and in terms of and that human experience. And so, um, so yeah, so that's basically. I say that uh, we're doing just that with stepping out of your comfort zone to a certain degree and placing yourself even in vulnerable vulnerable positions to just showing the way essentially so show what what you think of it and as you said before uh, hopefully to be a sort of a guide for others who are uh, going through similar things yeah i mean that's uh you know i'm i'm 
doing what I can in any case. So, yeah. All right, John, that's it for today. I want to okay, take yeah. the opportunity to thank you very much for being here tonight. Thank and you for also me. for sharing your thoughts. Uh, it, I felt it very necessary just to invite you here to, to um, get a bigger picture of what you are trying to do with the new album that is released soon. Yeah, uh, Guys, if you want to know more about the visual artist slash songwriter slash producer <laughs> John Campbell, <laughs> check the links in the description of the video or down the blog post. And that's a wrap. So, uh, John, thanks again for being here tonight. Thanks for and having me, John. Thanks for watching. Be safe, guys.